they operate operate all over South America, Mexico, Africa, and they earn mostly in USD. That's why the results you'll see is twofold. It's like the czar component and the USD component. Now it's a huge dividend player. They'll continue to generate cash flow. Um, but you know, first of all, the coal prices are coming down. We are seeing energy uh, prices coming back to normalized levels. And also coal, you know, there is this debate that coal does not have a bright future because we're moving towards sustainable energy, more renewable energy. I think that most people, most investors, and especially on Twitter, I read a lot. I think they think a little bit incorrectly about the company in the sense that this isn't a company for the bottom drawer. I wouldn't invest into Gela and kind of forget about it and 10 years later, okay, I'm a billionaire. That's not how this company works. And the reason is the following. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Fin Me Up weekly stock watch where we cover the most important stock market news that happened during the week, whether it's directors dealings, financial results or big announcements. So we've got quite a few interesting companies this week, uh, two of them which I own, recently one I, I added to my portfolio. Before we get started, let us know in the comments if you had to hold one JSE company for the next 10 years, what would that company be? It can be small cap, large cap, one company. Only one company for the next 10 years. We'd love to know and you know, maybe we'll look into that company. The first company we're going to look at today is Tungela. This has been a fan favorite for the past three years as the results or the share price results has been incredible. And that's obviously because of the big demand for coal that we saw with the Russian Ukraine stuff. Um, and also, you know, with energy problems worldwide and, you know, just a massive coal price spike. And also Tungela was extremely undervalued. So the share price rocketed, the dividends rocketed, so they, re they reported results. The profit for the period was 18.2 billion rand, uh, operating free cash flow of 18 billion rand, final cash dividend of 40 rand per share. That brings the full year dividend to 100 rand per share, which means, so the, the company is currently, the share price is around 200 rand. So 100 rand per share was around 50% dividend. So if you bought 100 rand worth of shares, you basically got 50 Rand back as dividends. It is crazy. Um, so, you know, well done if you bought Tungela. I'm not one of those lucky winners, but well done if you did. Um, the thing about Tungela for me is, so obviously now it's a huge dividend player. They'll continue to generate cash flow. Um, but, you know, first of all, the coal prices are coming down. We are seeing energy uh, prices coming back to normalized levels. And also coal, you know, there is this debate that coal does not have a bright future because we're moving towards sustainable energy, more renewable energy, etc., etc. So, you know, that there is that long-term debate, but the short-term debate is, you know, this is going to be a proper dividend payer. Um, you, you can really earn a lot of dividends. And who knows, you know, maybe the coal price spikes again, or it, it's just a company that I don't really know that well. Um, Paul, maybe you can comment a bit more, but, you know, just quickly, the profit for the period was 18.2 billion rand. This is a company with a valuation of 28 billion rand. So, you know, the PE ratio is just below two. That means the earnings times two. You know, that is crazy cheap. Um, but, you know, there's a reason for that. It, has a, it is a long-term debate. But then also you get a juicy dividend. So, personally, I'm not going to buy Tungel at these levels. Um, that we, we saw the share price also coming down, but once again, there is a dividend. Any comments from your side, Paul? I know you've, you've done a, some research on Tungela previously. Thank you, Igor. Tungela, what a brilliant company for investors in 2022. I mean, the share price went up by more than a thousand percent, Igor. How many times in your life can you say that um, for a company within a year? I mean, that sounds like you know, some other crypto, random crypto coin, but it's actually a proper JC company for 28 and it ex excludes dividends. So that is amazing. Of course, it had a little bit of a pullback. It, it was over 300 rand a share. It's now 200 rand a share. But remember, like, like you said, coal prices aren't that high anymore. And also, they paid out a massive dividend. So whenever a company pays out a dividend, the share price tends to, to come down a little bit. So Tungela, it's amazing. We all love it. Um, but here is my two cents. I think that most people, most investors, and especially on Twitter, I read a lot. I think they think a little bit incorrectly about the company in the sense that this isn't a company for the bottom drawer. I wouldn't invest into Gala and kind of forget about it 10 years later. Okay, I'm a billionaire. That's not how this company works. And the reason is the following. Gala is heavily dependent on the coal price. So any company, whatever you sell, um, your revenue is a function of the price of the product that you sell and the volume of the product that you sell. Now, in Tungela's case, 
the price of coal went up from around $80 per ton, which was the historic average up until 2021, to over $400 a ton. So that is a 5x in the price of the product you're selling. So all they had to do on this side is double their volume, 2x, and then those two together is a 1,000% increase. And that is exactly what happened. So Tingela did brilliantly. I'm not taking anything away from the company. They increased what they could control, their volumes, and the quality of coal um, massively. So, but, but it's also on this side, a, a, a side that they cannot control, and that is the coal price. So that will definitely come down, and it has come down. It's, it was $80. It went up to $400. It's now trading at about $140 per ton, which is still a lot higher than it used to be. So just, just remember that. It's come down a lot, but it's still way higher than average. So what will, what will happen? Well, just basic economics. Either people will use less coal because it's now much more expensive, or they'll, they'll find ways to use it more efficiently. So, okay, I'm using the less coal for the same amount of operations because I have to, I have no choice. This is my input cost. And that will also ca cause the price of coal to come down a little bit. So I think Tungela is amazing. Uh, what am I doing? I've sold most of my Tungelas. I'm still holding on to a little bit because it is still, I think, you know, the valuation is still incredible, even at this level, and the dividend, of course. You cannot, um, I can't stay away from, from that dividend. But I'm also cautious in the sense that I'm not buying, you know, 50% of my portfolio will be together. You can't do that. Yeah, that's a great explanation. And by the way, if, if you want to book a call with Paul for free and get some financial input, you can just uh, book a call with him. The link is in the description. Uh, also, another thing with Tungela is also the short-term problems is they're struggling with transport. So, you know, they get the coal out of the ground, but then they need to be, it needs to be exported and transported. And that's also a short-term issue with all the railway issues and et cetera. But the, the other bull case scenario is, you know, we will still continue. There, there will still be a demand for coal in the next few years, and there's not a lot of companies investing in coal. I don't know of any, any companies that's actually putting resources on getting more coal out of the ground. Um, you know, so if the gold price, the gold demand will still be there, and, and together will be a beneficiary. So it's an interesting company, interesting debate. The next company is Advitech. It's one of the companies that I recently bought some of after these results. Um, a very small position in my portfolio, but it's mostly because you know I, I really want to get to know this company more, and there's there's no better way than actually having some skin in the game. So I bought a little bit of shares. Full disclaimer, uh, but you know I've been trading this company for a few years, and they've really showed great results calculated annual growth rate of around 11% with student numbers. Um, we're seeing some, some really good growth in the rest of Africa, uh, not just in South Africa. And, you know, the Africa market is huge. The total addressable market is huge because pro uh, public education is not looking too good. Um, so these results for the year ended 31 December, revenue increased by 18%, operating profit increased by 20%. Normalized earnings increased by 20%, earnings per share increased by 21%, and a full year dividend of 60 cents per share. You know, overall, these results were really good. Um, the management is, is also upbeat about the outlook. Um, you know, like I said, I, I love the education sector. I'm also a Stadio uh, shareholder. Um, I love Stadio will be my biggest uh, educational holding because it's much more scalable. It's early days, and you know, I really back the management. But Advitech has really showed. Great execution. They are continuously growing a big total addressable market, especially in the rest of Africa as well, sitting on quality assets. Um, you know, so it's definitely something to watch. And it's also the lowest educational, if you look at the valuation, the valuation is the lowest. It's uh, on a PE of around 12, um, compared to Stadio at around mid 20s. Um, you know, so it's not that highly valued. If you look at the revenue increasing by 18%, earnings per share increasing by 21 percent i'm really happy with these results i bought a little bit i'll continue to research more on advitech and share my findings as i go you can let me know in the comments if you want me to do a stock pick on advitech on the finmap app by the way remember to play your finmap quiz so you don't lose your streak um, we've got a few exciting developments in the pipeline with the quiz but also the rest of the apps so stay tuned for that any thoughts on advitech paul Thank you, Hugo. Great company, solid track record uh, over many years. So I think, you know, they, for, the, for, the, for the viewers, the, the, those of you who don't know, they have schools, they're also in the tertiary space, and then they also have like a recruitment side of the business. And it's strong household brands like Varsity College, the Crawford, Crawford School. So I think this is a great company. Uh, and like I said, um, 
they have a great track record and they're trading at lower valuations relative to the other two educational plays, which is Kira and Stadio. So that's, that's bullish. I also like the fact that they fit into the narrative of, you know, education into Africa. That's the one narrative that I kind of like. The other one is the privatization of education, especially in the tertiary space and also the secondary space. So like, like you said, and then lastly, the move, the gradual move away from UNISA, because like we know, UNISA used to have a monopoly, especially in the tertiary space online um you know not physical universities and now there's a there's many more players in the game of which advitech is one of them so that's definitely something i'm i'm, I'm looking looking out for the results pretty good i think you know revenue 18 percent earnings per share 21 percent it's 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 good the stock i think will never probably never hit the lights out we don't ever see a two three x in 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 five years but it will all it's not it's it's neither like it's not going nowhere either so it's a solid play i think it's one of those stocks where i will keep a small position in my portfolio maybe two or three percent interesting the next company is a company that's one of my uh top holdings um it's a company that i'm very confident holding for the long term it's got a massive moat um you know it's a unique player it's a niche player in a, a diversified industry or different industry which i don't have too much exposure to and that is master drilling Master drilling is also in the small cap basket on easy equities. So there's several fin me up uh, baskets on easy equities, both JC and US. Small caps, uh, home runs, table mountain. And in the US, we have AI data, cybersecurity, new technology, uh, Statue of Liberty, various baskets. You can check that out. Uh, but master drilling, the reason why it's also in our, our small cap basket is, I know, Paul, you also like master drilling. Incredible results. Revenue increased by 31.7%. Earnings per share increased by uh, 19% in RAND terms. The order book is stable at uh, more than $265 million. The pipeline is also more than $567 million. So, you know, the demand is massive. Uh, they just need to be able to supply. And I love companies where the demand is the problem. Uh, because uh, the supply is the problem because demand is what people want and supply is what you can what companies can give and the more master drilling you know bring fleets on board and the better utilization rates the more the revenues will grow because the demand is there you know companies need to re mining companies re need to reinvest so they do drilling um, they do rock boring etc etc they're also now moving into a more technology driven uh, space you know which is more scalable as well but this is a company they are in in every continent they are operating um so they've they completely geographically diversified they've also you know got some of the biggest mining names in the world which means you know they've got clients that will still be there in five ten years the order book is healthy um you know they've got a fleet that is so big it is i don't see how a competitor will be able to or especially a new entrant will be able to compete with master drilling because it takes so much investment knowledge and time to get this fleet up and running to where master drilling is the cash generated from operating activities was 25 uh, us million dollars um you know so it's cash generative it's it's paying a dividend they increase the dividend and the dividend is now 47.5 cents it was 32.5 cents the previous year so you know there's a proper dividend increase the generating cash flows on a pe of around four or five um with a healthy order book geographically diversified you know that's why i'm a master drilling holder that's why it's in the fin me up small small cap basket on easy equities and you know the thing is that you must also remember it is a small cap on the jse which means it's not very liquid there's not a lot of value, uh, volumes so even after these great results, the share price did nothing. And the share price has done nothing for so many years. But, you know, sometimes you just have to wait it out. Uh, if, you can, if you believe in the management, if you believe in the company to perform well over the long term, eventually the share price will catch up or there will be an acquisition or something where you get your returns or big dividends, whatever it might be. I remember in Santova when I invested several years back at two rand, it stayed two rand for like three years. I got impatient. I sold my shares and look where it's now. I bought back at six rand a share um, and now it's around eight rand. So, you know, sometimes, especially the small caps, if you believe in the company, if they're executing well, if they're performing well, you know, don't lose patience. This is not a, a short term game. It's a long term game. Anyway, not from my side of master drilling. Um, what do you think, Paul? Yeah, you go. Like you said, uh, this share price hasn't done anything for years now, and I'm actually I've been holding it for like five years, and it's killing me. 
uh, because I, there's so much potential. I don't know why it's not going anywhere. It's so frustrating, but hopefully within the next year or two, and we'll see some share price um, growth. So just for those of you who don't know, Ma Ma Master Drilling is essentially a services company uh, in, the, in the mining industry. They are the world's largest boring um, company. Um, interesting fact about Master Drilling, they actually don't use explosives in their operations. So you, you can think if you use explosives, Maybe maybe you blow up something that you're not supposed to blow up, or you know maybe weaken other structures. So they are very clean in their operations, and they're a solid company, conservative. I think it's one of Keith's top five uh, picks as well. So you can watch that video link in the description. They operate operate all over South America, Mexico, Africa, and they earn mostly in USD. That's why the results you'll see is twofold: it's like the czar component and the USD component which is a very nice RAND edge. That's one of the reasons also I kind of like them is they're not dependent on whatever the RAND, um, you know, if, they're, if the currency of the RAND, or the, pre, or the RAND um, stays strong because they are in, in USD. The problem here is two, twofold. One is why isn't my share, share, share is going up? I really want to make some money. So that's the one thing investors can get impatient. The other thing is you go, like you said, this liquidity. It's a very small company, actually. Even though they're the world's biggest, you know, boring company, they only have 2 billion rand market cap. And also insiders own quite a bit of the, of the company. So the free float, in other words, the, the shares that are available to the public are very, very few. So that's why you'll see on easy equities when you try and buy the share, the spread is, let's say the, sp the share is trading at 20 rand, you can only buy it for 23 rand or whatever because the spread is so big. And because we get we have liquidity issues, there's not a lot of price action going on. So I will be holding on to my master drilling shares, and then hopefully maybe Keith does something, maybe something happens, and then boom, we see what I've been wanting to see. And that's yeah, that's my two cents. Yeah, well, they definitely got a moat, and uh, you know the it, it's always I love it when the insiders own quite a chunk of shares in the company because you know sh there's that quote, "Show me where the incentive is, and I'll show you the outcome." Um, so I'm sure the management will press, you know, press hard for this for this company to do well over the long term. Um, but yeah, interesting company. By the way, for the last JSE announcement, Paul wants to do another stock pick on a JSE company. Um, he, he had, he's done an interview with one of our mentors, Shal Buerta, on Caxton. That video will be posted soon. Um, interesting company I'm also keeping my eye on. And then also he wants to do a stock pick on either Calgro or... Uh, Ultron. So, you know, let us know in the comments which one of those two, or if there's a different company, and, and he'll that, do that for you. So, quickly looking at the US, not too much news coming from the US. Um, obviously, a lot of AI announcements. Elon Musk calling on AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months uh, the training of AI system that's more powerful than ChatGPT4. You know, so over the years, Elon Musk has said quite a bit that, you know, uh, we, we must be careful of AI. Uh, so he's calling a pause on that. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen because, you know, it's a, it's a race to the moon with us. Um, Apple has introduced Apple Pay Later to allow consumers to pay for purchases over time. So it's basically buying on credit. That's all that this, this, this buy now, pay later is. Uh, Google has also announced some, you know, new AI developments, but nothing worth noting. Microsoft, you know, ChatGPT is still growing faster with us. Um, so Microsoft has rebuilt Microsoft Teams from the ground up, promising users two times faster performance. Microsoft calls this reimagining of teams from the ground up. With this, Microsoft says joining meetings should now be two times faster, while switching between chats and channels will be 1.7 times faster. In addition, the company also redesigned the overall user experience. Microsoft also announced today that the teams now has uh, 280 million monthly active users, up from 270 million in January 2022. Microsoft, incredible company, definitely I think the company ahead in this AI competition, um, but the underdog for me, which I'm also betting on, uh, is Google. Uh, I, I think Google will definitely, you know, is they, they're like this dark horse, and that, that's probably going to come from behind because Microsoft is ahead, but it's very interesting to watch. We have an AI data, cybersecurity, and new tech basket on easy equities in the US accounts. So you can check those companies. Microsoft is in that, app, Google as well, and Apple. Um, so you can check that out. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Uh, remember, you can book a call with Paul. Link is in the description. Link to the Keith McLaughlin's video is also in the description. And to the Fin Me Up app. Remember to play the quiz. It's five questions every single day. Uh, all things finance related. 
it's a fun way you know you can compete with friends you can build up your streak there's over five users with over 100 day streaks that include includes playing on christmas on new year's eve and on sundays and everything so let us let us know where your quest streak is um you know i'm struggling to get mine above 30 but you know we'll get there anyway hope you have a great day thanks for watching remember liking and subscribing goes a long way cheers